Like a crazy person, I'm going to be riding my fixed gear about 800 miles from Sacramento to San Diego, California. It's going to take me about two weeks, so I'm taking at a pretty chill pace, but here is everything that I am taking with me. All my sleeping gear, all my food, all my clothes, all of my camera equipment and stuff that I'm using to make videos, and hopefully through this you can figure out what exactly you need and how doable it is to go bike touring on a fixed gear. Shout out to Wobby Cycles for sponsoring this fixed gear bike touring video series and shout out to them for making a dope bike that can 100% handle fixed gear touring. Just for being lovers of bikes and making this dope content and trip possible. So everything that you see is what I'm taking, aside from a cycling cap and a helmet. But let's start off with the bike itself. So, the stuff I'm carrying on the bike, if you want to check out my exact setup, uh, click the card above where we do the bike check. But the stuff that I'm carrying on the bike, we have my sleeping kit in the front basket. Got a sleeping bag. Uh, by the way, all the stuff is linked in the description. A sleeping mat and a bivy. In my mind, I was going to camp out for like half of this ride, um, but I don't know what's going on, dude, but all the campsites in California are just booked like months in advance, even on weekdays. And if it's not, it's gonna be like a hundred plus bucks just to sleep on the ground. Like it's insane. And I'm not a, an experienced enough camper to do something like stealth camping, so, at that point, I'm just gonna like say screw it and I'm doing warm showers and crashing on people's couches and staying at hotels. <laughs> but for some of it, I was able to find some campsites, so maybe like a few nights I'll be doing that. Cable lock, new lock. It's California, it doesn't get too remote. I'm going into town, going into restaurants, I need to lock up my bike. People can be jerks here, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> In the frame bag, I have eight cliff bars. We got peanut butter on the drive side, chocolate on the non-drive side. It's really important to stay fueled up and be eating pretty consistently when you're doing ultra long distance. And then on the saddle, I have a saddle bag. It's not actually a saddle bag. This is actually a handlebar bag from Lead Out, but it works perfectly as a saddle bag. And in this I have all my bike tools, uh, most of them anyway. Um, spare tube, a uh, PDW3 wrencho, which is a 15 millimeter wrench, and also a tire lever. Some more tire levers. An adjustable wrench to tighten any bolts that might vibrate loose on my front rack. And of course, your metric Allen keys. And a patch kit, just in case I have more than one flat. Oh yeah, and I also have a front light. This is a Magic Shine RN3000. It's USB-C, which is great. And then I have Magic Shine's tail light, which is a S, what is it? They have weird names. I'll put it in the description. Uh, this is not USB-C. This is still micro USB. That drives me nuts, because this is the only micro USB thing I have, and then I have to bring the whole charger and the kit and caboodle, it's annoying. Please, for the love of God, Magic Shine, make this USB-C so I can use the same charger for my taillight and my headlight. <laughs> and then for the stuff that's on me and how I'm dressing, uh, let's do the pockets first. Got my phone. It's an iPhone 12 mini, because it's the least obtrusive phone that can fit in your pocket and doesn't really bother me while I'm riding and it also has great video quality. Wallet, duh. Hand sanitizer and a mask. You know, we're getting back to normal, but we're not normal yet, so it's still nice to have these around. And then of course, I've got uh, keys for my U-lock. And for how I'm dressed, I'm wearing a Patagonia waterproof jacket. Um, contrary to popular belief, it actually does rain in California. I'm from Northern California. It's very different than Southern California, but yeah, it still does rain in April and May. <laughs> Underneath, I'm just wearing a linen shirt. I'm going mostly to be riding in linen because it looks nice. That's very important to me. <laughs> it's breathable and it allows the sweat to evaporate, so it's pretty comfortable to ride in. 
and also it looks good wrinkled. So that is a huge plus when you're bike touring. Jeans, duh, because that's just how I roll. Just wearing some chucks on the bottom because they're comfortable and I'm going to be pedaling them all day. They canvas so they can breathe. And I'm not riding clipless because I like to walk. <laughs> so on my bike, I have about 17 pounds of gear. And then this backpack without the camera uh, weighs 21 pounds. That's also without water. And then the camera itself that I'm recording on, that's another like five or six pounds. So in total, I have 43 pounds of gear. Not exactly a super lightweight setup and you will see why very soon. And it's very likely that if you're doing a bike tour similar to mine, your setup could be way lighter. <laughs> The camera that I'm shooting on is a Canon EOS R with a 15 to 35 millimeter lens. This is my favorite thing and my most hated thing in my kit because it allows me to share my journey. It allows me to, to vent and just like get things out of my head and make myself feel better. But glass is heavy and that's a lot of glass to be carrying. It's really bulky, it's really unwieldy, but the shots that it gets are just so good, and the videos that I can make with it just make the weight worth it, even if it is a pain in the neck, literally. Moving on to the backpack, I'm using a Chrome Barrage Freight. It's about a 35 liter backpack, it's pretty big, and shout out to Chrome for sending this over and letting me have it and use it on my trip. Uh, it is way better than the messenger bag that I was using. It's way more comfortable, especially when it's loaded down. And again, what the heck do I have 21 pounds worth of gear in here for? Uh, well, let's start with the, let's start with the outside. So the Barrage Cargo has this, uh, or Barrage Freight, or any of the Barrage backpacks have this cargo net on the outside, which is great for just stuffing things into. Stuff that's bulky, low value, doesn't mind getting wet or mind getting damaged. And so in here, let's just start off at the top. I have my rain kit for my bike. It's just a couple ass savers and a Brooks saddle cover. Sunglasses. Scrubba Tactical Wash Bag. This is how I will be doing laundry. It's basically a washing machine where you just like scrub and then it cleans your clothes. It actually works pretty well. I use this the entire time, the entire three months that I was in Mexico. This is the only way that I did my laundry and I smelled just fine. <laughs> and then I have a bag that has a GoPro accessories, so a chest mount and some filters. And the last thing in the front pocket is the tripod for Mr. Big Boy camera that I hate to carry around, but I love to shoot with. And then I also have a backup tail light on the cargo net. Side pocket, got a third water bottle. I'll have two on the bike and then extra water. Other side pockets have a Topeak Road Morph G. This is a very good portable pump. It can get to high PSIs relatively easily for a portable pump. Also in the side pocket, I have some uh, sports electrolyte tablets. Really important to stay hydrated when doing mega distances. This is one of my favorite things in the kit. This is Dr. Bronner's soap. <laughs> and this right here is liquid gold. It smells incredible. I will be using this to shower, wash my face, use it as shampoo, use it to wash my clothes. Like this does everything and it just makes you feel like so put together. Like. There's a reason that this soap has had the same formula since the 1800s because it's that good. And then last in the side pockets, I have a microfiber towel uh, for showering at campsites or in people's houses where I don't want to use their towels. <laughs> Moving to the main compartment, just going from top to bottom. Uh, this is my toiletry bag. It's got, you know, contact, lens solution, inhaler, toothbrush, floss, toothpaste, that kind of thing. Everything to make you feel civil and, and clean, which is actually a huge part of bike touring because like 
Yes, bike touring is very physically demanding, but it's also incredibly mentally demanding. So it's just as important to take care of your mind as it is to take care of your body. Just because like, if you feel good, then your body will feel good and being able to stay clean will really help with that. Also, pro tip, ibuprofen, take it. It will come in handy, I almost guarantee it. Do my clothes next. So this bag has a laptop sleeve. Uh, I don't use it though for a laptop. I do have a laptop, but I, I use it for my clothes so that it adds some more cushion to my back when all this weight is resting on it. And it also compacts the clothes down so that it's easier to carry around. So for my clothes, I have a second linen shirt. Oh, this thing has not been folded properly. A, a wool t-shirt. Wool is great since you can wear it over and over again and it doesn't stink. Stink is a huge enemy on bike tours. It's also relatively easy to wash and it dries quickly. It's comfortable to ride in. And then I have some home sleeping clothes at the bottom. So I have uh, some track pants that I like to sleep in. A reasonably dangerous t-shirt that I sleep in. Buy one if, if you want in the description, zacalardo.com slash merch. And then I have a pair of shorts. These are Billabong board shorts. So they look like regular shorts, but they're actually uh, like swimming trunks. So. Anything that can do two things in one, it's like prime for bike touring. <laughs> I'm going to San Diego, of course I'm taking the shorts. It'll also be nice to have these when I am riding and it gets too hot. Last thing in the main compartment is, you don't need this, but I need this because I'm making videos. <laughs> it's a laptop, it's some, also some chargers and stuff. Uh, let's just start with the small pockets. So this contains all my camera chargers. Uh, I have a battery bank in here, so even if I don't stop by a cafe or something to charge up, I can get about a day and a half worth of phone battery. And then some cables, USB, USB-C, and lightning. Thanks, iPhone. Gosh, that's so annoying. Big charger for laptop. This is USB-C so I can charge my phone with it. AirPods so I can edit. I don't like to uh, listen to music while I'm riding usually, but I might go crazy enough while well, this will come in handy while I am riding. Have a another USB-C cable specifically for the Samsung SSD where I'll dump all my files and then the cable for the charger. And the laptop that I'm using is the 2021 MacBook Pro in 16 inch because it has a big screen for my big eyes. I used to edit on Windows machines because mostly for games, like <laughs> that's, that's why. But I'm getting a Steam Deck so that kind of defeats the purpose of Windows for me. And also Mac laptops, like I can edit an entire video on battery life and export it. There's no way I could do that on a Windows machine. Also. I can edit on the trackpad because the trackpad is that good. Like, there's no Windows laptop that allows me to do those things. And so I don't even have to carry around a mouse. It's great. This thing, I could be at a campsite, I could be at a park, I could be at a really crowded cafe where I don't have access to a power outlet. It's cool. It's cool. I can still get my work done. All right, so this bag is so large. It has so many different compartments that I actually missed a couple. <laughs> Going back, so this other side pocket, GoPro with a windscreen, and toilet paper. This is my first rodeo, okay? Like, I've, I've traveled around quite a bit. This comes in handy. I won't tell you any specifics, but you'll be glad that you have toilet paper on the road. Second side pouch. Oh my gosh, this bag is so cavernous. I have uh, two extra pairs of wool socks. Again, wool is great because you can wear them for days, sweat in it, and it doesn't stink. It's magical. 
And then two pairs of boxers. So in total, I have three pairs of boxers, three pairs of socks. So I only have to do laundry like every, every other day. And then in the event that I'm just sleeping on the side of the road or at a campsite that doesn't have a, a shower or a shower that I want to use, shower wipes, uh, what are these called? Wilderness wipes from Sea to Summit. I haven't used these yet, but you know what? Cleanliness, super important to me. It'll be good to have around. The key to packing for a bike tour, bike packing trip, you wanna be as comfortable as possible while also being as light as possible. And the question you need to ask yourself is, how uncomfortable am I willing to be? It's a balancing act because the more things you pack, the more things that make you comfortable off of the bike, the more weight it is and the more and the less comfortable that you'll be on the bike and you want to make your time on the bike as comfortable as possible even if it means sacrificing some comforts when you're camping out or sleeping and you know taking a break off of the bike hopefully this has made you realize that you don't really need a lot of stuff to go bike touring or bike packing all you really need is the basics and a bike to get you there most importantly the desire to. The stupid desire to ride your bike for days on end and <laughs> like, why, why am I doing this? Fix these famous shouts to Thane Berg, Brandon Black, David K, Gio Desera, Julian Corona, Ryan Witscott, Pelagi, and Zane Kolnick for helping to make these videos possible through the support on Patreon. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter, so be sure to ride your bike every day, even if it is multiple days on end to be reasonably dangerous.